Hey everyone, I'm Lawrence Haber. I'm a bass player and musician living in New Jersey. And today I'm going to give you an example of using music as a form of expression. Now, of course, we should always be doing that, right? That's the point of music, to feel something, to emote something. Um, but the best way to kind of understand that intellectually, I think, is to think of music as what it really is. It's a language, okay? It's a form of uh, organizing different emotions and ideas into phrases, uh, into patterns, and shapes, structuring your feelings or your ideas into musical information. So of course we have scales and arpeggios, we have rhythms, and we have tone, dynamics. Um, so going from loud to soft, dynamics, just like when we talk, going from loud to soft, uh, we have time, you know, how fast we choose to speak and get across ideas or how slowly we choose to deliver those ideas. Okay, And then of course we have phrasing. So if I were to say, music is a language, that's a pretty aggressive way to say that. If I were to say, music is a language, it's another way. So I've said the same words, music is a language uh, in different ways and they might create different emotional responses. And so when we play music, we want to express our ideas similarly. We want to use phrases, we want to use our vocabulary um, to create different emotional responses for ourselves or in communication with other people. Um, and of course, we simply want to be free to say what we want and have it make sense to others. Uh, and so. Music theory, in my opinion, is just a way of describing. It's not telling you, you must do it this way. It's just a series of uh, ways of describing what's happening in the rhythms that you're hearing, the chords you're hearing, the related scales, um, and of course the way the music is affected through different tones, using a bass versus a guitar versus a voice. Um, same goes for language. You know, if you talk with a megaphone versus talking with an iPhone versus talking with no phone, just your voice. Uh, it's going to sound different. It's going to create different reactions. So basically, or and responses. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of music and I'm going to improvise. And when I improvise, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to think about notes or scales or chords. Instead, I'm going to switch my brain off and, and talk to you as I play. And my phrasing is only going to match the words. So I'm not going to think, okay, necessarily about the notes or the music theory piece, I'm gonna think only about what I'm saying and I'm gonna allow my hands to match that. Okay, I'm just thinking about the words I'm saying to you, not really thinking about the bass too much because I don't wanna get stuck into, into my playing. I wanna really just focus on you. The listener, the listener who is giving me seven minutes of their time already, and I don't want to bore you, but it really, it really doesn't matter if I bore you or not, because it's just like it doesn't matter if I play bad notes or not. I'm playing random notes. I don't even know what notes I'm playing. I'm just playing random things. I'm playing, I'm not thinking about theory, I'm not thinking about notes, I'm not thinking at all about scales, or chords, or any of that stuff. I don't even know, I'm, I'm talking so fast and you can actually hear it on my bass when I play. So maybe I should just relax and maybe if I relax, I'll calm down, down and have some better ideas that, well, maybe now I'm going too slow and it's forcing it. And nothing should be forced when you play. It should just be natural, just like when you talk. I don't know where I'm at right now. I think the software is messed up, but that's okay. Because, you know, I could be talking to you and there could be a fire drill in the middle of the conversation. Um, and what am I going to do? Am I going to stop talking to you? Maybe I would if it's a life or death situation. Um, now I'm trying just to calm down and just play. And 
talk to you and not worry about what comes out necessarily because that's the way that you really get to have good relationships with other people. That was a weird example. I don't know how it sounded at all. It probably looked ridiculous, but that's not the point. The point is when you learn all of these scales, you know, all these modes and all these diminished scales and, and, and all these substitutions of scales, um, and you learn arpeggios and, and techniques, really, all that stuff should go out the window when you're trying to play. Now, I don't mean in like a, a formal context. If you're, if you're playing a, in a symphony, you're not going to do that. You're going to read the music, just like when you're reading a book, and you're going to try and digest the information so that you can then interpret it in your way um, as close to the, what's written as you can so that it's accurate, an accurate representation of the idea. But when you're improvising or practicing even, one thing I think everyone should do is just play and try to shut off the formal trained side of your brain and just communicate through your instrument. And you'll find that over time, the subconscious of what you know will come out naturally, more naturally, and you can use it to better effect in your communicating through music. Remember, music is a language. It's just made up of phrases, syllables, fragments. And if you have completely formed ideas, you can structure your communication of those ideas through your instrument and be just as much a musical speaker as you are a human speaker.